Good, good, good. Um, just letting you know that this is uh, recorded, so you're cool with that, mate? Yes, sir. <laughs> where, where, where are you calling from? I'm uh, calling from Perth, Perth, West Australia. From, from Perth? Yeah, Perth, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love Perth. I, I, like, yeah. I love Frio. Frio. Oh, I'm literally like 10 minutes away from Fremantle, eh? Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, you were here in... Um, you were here 2006 and a couple of years ago, weren't you not? We were here in, oh yeah, yeah, no, right. No, the first time we, the first time I went there uh, was 2007, I think it was. And yeah. then we went, we went uh, like in 2000, I think we were there like in 2010 or 11 or something like yeah. that. And then the last time we were there was in 17, 2017. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure I saw you at the uh, Chinese Democracy World Tour actually, 2007. Right, right, yeah. right. Was that was that when we in two thousand and seven we were with Rose Tattoo right I think correct yes Rose right. Tattoo uh, wow and because I think I think in two thousand and eleven we were weren't we with um Corn were we with Corn in like in two thousand and eleven or so or ZZ Top might have been ZZ Top no it it, it was his, uh Sebastian Bach uh, sorry, are, are Johann Sebastian Bach yeah okay Sebastian okay. Bach Sebastian Bach okay, okay. yeah yeah no, not Johann <laughs> uh, so uh, brother. <laughs> Yeah, how, how you been? Are you in LA or New York right now, mate? I'm in California. I'm in the desert near near Palm Springs. Oh, okay, okay, nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Hey, um, congratulations on your band. Uh, is it Pissar or P S S R? How you pronounce it, mate? Well, well, the 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 band is pronounced Pisser, P I S S E R. Um, but but we call the P S S R because uh, we figured it'd be easier to get T-shirts and stuff in stores that way. <laughs> <'cause> I don't <laughs> think. I don't think Walmart or or, or 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 any of those kind of stores or Target would sell a shirt that says P I S S E R on it, but it's pronounced Pisser. Okay, Pisser. All right, good on you, mate. So it feels a bit like a um, rock star supernova feel, you know, with you at the helm at the drums, and you've got Brad, you've got Eric J. It feels like a supernova, like a you know, like a rock star. Um. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, all those guys are working musicians. I don't. I don't know. I, I, are you implying that it's, it's like a or like an all star rock band or something like that? Yeah, I think mean? so. I mean, you and it. I mean, in, in in a in a sense, in a sense. I, I mean, I guess I guess somebody could look at it that way. I, I, to be honest with you, um, Sheldon, I've never thought about it that way. I mean, it's basically a band, um, that formed because uh, everybody is a working musician. So whenever we got together, we you know we get together and play a gig, and we would call it pitcher. Yeah. Um, and Eric, the singer, had all these songs. So, so, so Richard Ford is from Guns N' Roses, and I were in a band with Eric back in the late '90s called Honky Toast. So we did a record for Sony. Um, and we did the record, did an album cycle, and got dropped. You know, like most bands do. Um, so Eric formed Pisser out of the ashes of Honky Toast. So whenever, so you know, Richard and I go off to do other things. Whenever Richard and I would come back into New York, either one of us, we'd go and play with Pisser with Eric. You know. Um, and then the lineup that's on the record is a lineup that that uh, has been consistent since 2015. And again, it's also other musicians that are touring musicians and stuff. And and whenever we get together, we play. But but in the, in the last five years or so, it's been us four um, in Pisser. But Pisser's been around for a minute. It's been around for over 10, 15 years, something like that. Okay. Well, okay. Cool. Cool. Like but so. I never looked at it the way you, you you just described it. That's interesting. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, no, was, I think it's because of you and it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, so, New, York, um, New York. I'm a regular bloke in New York, man. <laughs> the yeah. doesn't, doesn't go that far in New York. You still catch your beat down like a regular dude. <laughs> it doesn't uh, matter. Back east. But, but I'm sure you get recognized all the time, mate. So, uh, so far, you, well, in the three singles I've heard so far, Push, Busted, and Last Time, um, to me, it's got that rock bluesy feel to it. So, if I do humanize the tracks right it feels like the love child of steve tyler and james brown um oh wow dude you're having a unique perspective on this and james brown i could definitely see it with like eric's kind of like banter a little bit wow dude i never really look dude you well thank you very much sheldon for like really paying attention <laughs> and listening but uh but that's really interesting um I mean, I could definitely see the elements of James Brown for sure, because Eric is he's a very funky white boy. So I could definitely see James Brown in there. Um, the thing that drew me to Eric when I first saw him, like in the mid '90s, before I joined even joined Honky Toast, um, he had like this Bon Scott Iggy Pop thing happening, 
And uh, that's the thing that really drew me in. I, I mean, Bon Scott is my favorite um, rock star. You being so close to, to where he's laid to rest, you know, um, he's my favorite rock star. Um, so, um, but, but yeah, and Steven Tyler, for sure. I mean, that's definitely an, an element, you know, um, Aerosmith, Steven Tyler. I mean, ACDC, obviously, and then all the New York City punk stuff, like the Dictators and the Dolls, and, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, so, so I appreciate your, your really unique per- perspective on this, Sheldon. Pretty hot. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pretty Frank. Awesome. And, yeah, and that was the first time you heard something of, of that analogy? Is that the first time you heard something like that? Uh, with James yeah, Brown? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, James Brown for sure. I mean, I mean, we we do we do have funky tunes, but they're more of the the grimy Rolling Stones funky kind of not not really more classic like urban funky. Uh, um, so so yeah, so I I could I could I could definitely appreciate your 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 perspective for sure. Cool. Um, so last time is the uh, is the latest single. Um, so to me, it feels like. It's a song, the first song to be played when Dr. Fauci says, everyone, you are right to go out and just have a party. Um, is that a vibe or is it more of a track of frustration, like being in isolation? Right. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, obviously it was pre, pre-COVID we recorded that song. That song's yep. been written for a couple of years. But no, yep. basically, the, basically the, the, the theme of that is like, it's, it's like, you know, growing up in New York City, being a city guy you know it's like you know you always have to fight your little mini battles just to get through the day so just to the main thing is just remember you know think about the last time you had a good time and you know there'll be another one coming up so um again it's pre-covid it's not it doesn't apply yeah. i mean i understand i understand that uh it's it's, it's 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 this is definitely a time where people start to think back and we're like when was the last time i had a good time but it was it's not it's not a statement of the current times um it's more, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's a future statement. Let's put it that way. Hopefully it would be a statement and be something that somebody look forward to. And when was the last time you had fun, sir? Well, you know, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to bring this thing down. Um, and I am, I have to be honest with you. I'm really grateful that I'm safe and sound and I'm healthy. Um, so, you know, my best friend is staying with me here. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm not having a bad time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not having a bad time. I'm, I'm, I'm staying locked down. I wear my mask. I wash my hands. Um, I social distance. So, um, I'm just happy. I'm just happy to be here right now. So, so uh, it's the best way I can answer that, you know? Yeah. My, my partner Nadia was saying that, uh, she could see this song being in the air. In the, the bourbon ad, you know? Oh yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> that'd be great if somebody wants to. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It just it, it, that song's great. That, that song does have that element of like that whole like bar. You know, everybody hanging out in a pub, just like having a good time. You know, cheers, raising a glass. It definitely has that feel. That song for sure. Yeah. And will there be a video to accompany the song soon? Probably. I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the plan. The plan is to, you know, in the midst of this this pandemic, is somehow to figure a way to be a, still a, a working band. But um, again, you know, I mean, we we we're patient with this. Uh, Mark and Golden Robot is very patient with this whole thing. Um, but um, yes, the goal the goal is to be a regular working band. You bet. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the next single, uh, Busted. I mean, uh, when when well, that was recorded uh, last year, wasn't it, Busted? Uh, Busted, all those songs record around the same time. The, the record, we, we, we did the record on our own. Um, we've had it in the can a couple of years, and it finally got to somebody's desk at, at Golden Robot. You know, Mark listened to it, the CEO, and loved it. Um, all the songs pretty much were, were recorded around the same time, and they were written pretty much around the same time. You know, and Busted is also another sleazy New York City. All the songs have the same theme, you know. It's like this, I describe it like, you know, um, trying to walk around on Avenue C in the Lower East Side in the middle of January and it's cold and wet and you're just trying to get to the next spot. And that's what Pitcher sounds like. It's just grimy and dirty, busted, push, push also, same thing, kind of like that feel. If, if, you, if, if, you like, if you like grimy rock and roll, I mean, it's definitely Pitcher for sure. Yeah, because you mentioned about the New York feel to it, the grimy feel. Is that the uh, typical sound of a New York band? I mean, what defines a typical New York style band? 
Oh, I mean, I mean, New York is so diverse. I don't think there's a typical New York City band, yeah. but um, we definitely move towards more of the like degeneration and dictators and New York dolls, and we definitely we're, we're definitely in more in, in 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 that space for sure. You know, um, so I wouldn't call it a typical New York sound, but I would definitely say that it's unique to New York, the sound of Kisser. Yeah, cool. Um, also, this song, Buster, is about having self-awareness, isn't it? To ensure that we don't get into trouble kind of thing. Is that the theme of the song? <laughs> Again, another great perspective by Mr. Sheldon. Um, yeah, I think, I think Buster is more about, about, that, about what the title is, about getting busted. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes to get busted. Uh, about getting caught out there, you know, um, with, with your girl or with the law, or with your job, you know. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. And is that but, every, a, but, you uh, know, I mean, I mean, again, everything does have, um, uh, you know, ev everything does have a positive um, hue to it for sure. We're, we're, we're not, we're not downers. We're not, we're not, this is not about, you know, cry baby music. You know what I'm saying? We're out there to kick ass and uplift and have a good time. So, um, it's, it's definitely, um, everything is positive about Pisser. Everything is positive. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you being a rock star, is that a personal experience then? All your songs, are they all written from first experience? <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Uh, I, I, I mean, um, again, like I was saying at the start of this interview, I mean, you know, I'm a regular bloke in New York City. You know, I mean, it's, it's regular. There's not too many rock stars walking around New York City. You get, you'll catch the same beat down as a regular dude. So, um, uh, again, the songs are pretty much, uh, um, uh, they, they, they come from Eric. He's the main inspiration songwriter of the band. Um, so there, a lot of these songs are about his personal um, 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 perspective on life, you know, his, yeah. his, his own uh, ideas and, and stuff that he's gone through um, living in New York City. So, so and then, he, then obviously it gets, it gets fil filtered to us and then we make it into songs, but um, pretty much what you're, you're hearing in the lyrics especially is um, Eric's life experiences. Ah, cool, cool. I, um, so... Among the three of you, uh, who is the band leader? I mean, uh, I mean, you coming from a really huge band. Does that default you as the uh, the captain no, of the band? I, 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 I think I think um, I, if they, if we were had to, if we had to say who's the captain of the team, it would probably be Rob Bailey. Rob Bailey is probably the captain of the team. Um, he's the, he's probably the best musician in the band, <laughs> and he's also uh, super smart and and uh, he takes care of all the all the logistics and you know you know. I, I would say that he is, you know, you know, um, um, obviously if, if this is regular times, I'd be out on tour with Guns N' Roses. And, and so, so, uh, you know, and Brad, the bass player, he plays with a lot of different artists. He's played with some incredible artists, you know, uh, um, Greg Ullman, he played with Greg Ullman, he played with, uh, uh, Bernie Worrell from Funkadelic. So, so, um, um, Rob is like the main guy that he would, he's definitely would be the captain of the, of the ship for sure. Yeah. Um, so are we expecting uh, more singles coming out from Pisser? I believe, I believe that last time will probably be the last one until the record comes out in December. It's a record. It's an album coming out, is it? An album coming out in December. Uh, first week in December. Okay. And what... I believe December 9th is the, the, the date, I think. December 9th. That's, that's our partner's birthday, actually, so I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> is it your birthday? No, my, my, my partner Nadia's birthday is on December 9th. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. So, so I'll, I'll remember that as well for your record. <laughs> um, yeah. So what can we expect from the record? Is, are this, the, these three tracks will be in the album. Is it similar sort of feel, theme to the next 10 yeah, tracks maybe? For sure. yeah. For, yeah, it's 10 tracks altogether. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, we're consistent. Yeah. I mean, if you dig Motorhead, if you dig, you know, Dictators, if you dig Iggy, MC5, you're going to love the record. You're going to love the record. Cool. Sure. Cool. ACDC. I mean, obviously, you know, you know, we, you know, I mean, even though ACDC is an Australian band, you know, they love AC. You know, ACDC is like in our hearts a New York City band. They play CBGBs, you know. <laughs> so, you know, you love ACDC, you're gonna hear elements of that in there. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a lot of the same. 
Yeah. Speaking of ACDC, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but in March, right, we actually closed the entire highway, 10 kilometers or six miles of highway, for just for ACDC's, for Bon Scott's tribute. We closed the entire and highway. Idea. Yeah. In Perth. In Perth. Yeah, in Perth, in Perth, yeah. So oh. from, uh, from Cambridge to Fremantle, we shut the entire highway, about six miles of it, just for an ACDC tribute, mate. So I, I had the pleasure of covering the event. So that was the biggest party on the planet, I reckon. So. Oh, wow. wow. Well, bon oh, Scott. Do you have it? Is it on YouTube? Did, did, did you did any video on stuff like that? I should check I'm out pretty YouTube. sure there, there would be some videos. Yeah, every time, every time we go to Perth, I, I, I go to Frio and visit Bon, for sure. I've done it three times, you know. Yeah. Those, every time. The, the, you mean the cemetery? Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, awesome, for sure. mate. Awesome. That's really yeah. awesome, mate. Hey, um, you mentioned the uh, the word uh, Guns Roses, and I'm very fully aware that this is not about Guns Roses. But do you mind if I ask you one or two general questions about Guns Roses? Um, you could. I don't know if I could answer them, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> How is it like? I promise you, you will not be personal. So, how is it like to be one of the world's biggest rock oh, bands, man? Yeah, no, that's, it's it's been a, it's been a, a you know a blessing. It's been exactly what you imagine it is. It is. I mean, I, I get to play in an iconic band with iconic musicians. That now, you know, one of them is a good friend of mine, and now all of them have become friends. You know, I'm really close to Axel, um, Richard, Melissa. Um, you know, Duff and I have a great, re- I mean, I mean, what can I say, dude? It's the, it's, it's, the, it's the greatest shit I've ever been involved in. It's the greatest, it's the greatest. What can I say? <laughs> I mean, I can't put it into words. I love doing it. I love my job. I hope I get to do it forever. And uh, I would, because I guess you don't have to answer this, but uh, Excel has this provider about him, you know, but something tells me that he's a very down to earth person, you know? We te- I, I text with him all the time. He's, he's, he's treated me like a band member since day one, since 2006. I have respect and love for that man. So um, regardless of what anybody else sees or thinks, um, he, I'm his soldier 100%. He has, you know, I have his back, whatever, whenever. Yeah, nah, it's... It's, it's such a um, yeah, great honor to have a chat with you because, you know, you're, you are you being who you are. Um, and just like you, Mike, it feels like I'm talking to, a, uh, to an old friend, you know, you're so humble, you know. So despite the fact that you are one of the greatest, you know, a member of one of the greatest bands on the planet, but talking to, talking to you, it just shows that you can be so high up here and still maintain the humility. So uh, it's such a good experience for me. Yeah? So, yeah. Well, well, thank you, Sheldon. That's nice. That's nice. I mean, I, I, you know, I, there's, you know, life, you know, this is the perfect example. You know, when you can never get too high up, man, because, you know, life is, life is tough, you know, and, and, and something like this, like the pandemic right now, will all put everything in perspective, you know. So I try to keep a nice, even keel throughout my whole, my whole life and in my professional life and my personal life. You know, I never yeah. get too down. I never get too up, you know. And I, and, and, and I love people. I love talking to people. So that's always going to be a part of, of who I am. Um, it's the reason why I'm in Guns and it's the reason why I play with Pisser because first and foremost, all those gentlemen and, and Melissa and, and ladies, they, we all get along. I mean, that's like the main reason, you know, we're together. We all get along, you know. And it's amazing that you know, I had a chat with like Phil X from Bon Jovi, um, Gary yeah, Pierce from Phoenix great. Says, uh, in the last month or so. They are, in, they are wearing the world's biggest band and yet they're still playing in a uh, small shows in a club scene. So it just resonates the uh, humility. You know? um, so that's, is, is it because of the labor of love for the, for the industry perhaps? Or, you know? mm. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, you know, I mean, Phil, I mean, I know Phil, um, um, we're players. That's what we do. We play. I mean, we, we, it could be 40 people, 40,000 people. It's still the same mechanics. It's still the same spark in your soul and in your heart, in your mind that makes you want to do what you do, to play your instrument as well as you can and have a great time doing it. So it doesn't really matter if there's 40 people or 40,000 people. You still play the same, you know, because it's, it's out of love, you know. So thank you very much. I've actually learned quite a lot about in this interview, not about music, but uh, in life in general. So yeah, I thank you for that, Frank. Um, Frank, thank you, yeah. So anyways, twenty minutes is up. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, please take care of yourself, and uh, I do hope to see you soon. And if, if you do yeah. come to Perth, 
I'll take you to Fremantle, mate. Marcel, I'll take you to Fremantle and we'll, we'll hang out, mate. That'd be awesome. I'm going to 100% take you up on that because I, t- I hop on the train, which is like an hour from Perth to Fremantle. I hop on the train, so I'll definitely take you up on that. You know, All right, sure. brother. All, All right, right brother. Thank, Thank you so you. much, sir. God bless you, man. Peace. God bless you too, brother. Get you that, Frank. See you, mate.